In this segment, I've taken apart the K-Line CP81. This is version two, and the way that you can tell that it's version two, it's right there, the CP, actually 2.1, July of 2020. And this particular version has some issue with the step-up circuitry, which is located right here as I look past the camera. And wanted to show that you can power this with eight and a half volts incoming, all right, and then if I look past the camera here, where the up converter circuitry, oh, I can't get it here. It's actually powering the chips with 18.1 volts. Actually, it'll dump, it's uh, going through a 10 ohm resistor. So it's actually seeing about 16.84 volts, but that's still good. You're still getting the full headroom of 18 volts. It's just doing it internally. At the time of recording this video, I have been in contact with the engineer and the product development specialist for K-Line Technologies over in China, and I'm on the eastern seaboard United States, so there is a bit of a time lag between the communication, but they have indicated that they have amended this board and are sending me a new version of this for me to test out. And what I was able to glean from this anyway, they sent me the schematic for version 2.1, it is missing two inductors and a capacitor up here because I don't see them on this board, but it's part of that up converter circuitry, which leads me to believe that without those components, that it cannot filter out all the noise that that circuit is creating and putting it on these chips and the audio line. So I'm hoping that will be fixed. I did ask them for clarification on also fixing the volume fader so that it can boost 12 dB instead of just cutting 12 dB. That would be a great fix as well. Really, those are the only two issues that I see with this version. If they can fix those two issues with the voltage and with that fader, you have a complete clone of the MXR that is extremely reliable at that point. But we'll just have to wait and see. It is coming from China, so it'll be a few weeks before I see it. But for you guys, it'll just be a few seconds. So in the next segment, you will see that. And we're back a couple weeks later. This is the new version 3.0 of the CP81, and it was manufactured on 10-15-2021, as you can see in the corner here. The engineer was able to identify the problem that I had uh, pointed out. They changed some of the circuitry here, and without getting too technical, they did change L1, which is that large square-looking thing, to a different value, and then they added a couple of the smaller inductors, L2 and L3, basically what was missing on the original schematic, but they've upgraded it to a this uh, C1, the 100 picofarad, to a 25 volt instead of a 16 volt. So now the chips are getting a true 18.1 volts on the audio signal here, so you are getting the advantage of the extra headroom. The other issue that I asked them to look into was the volume fader. Now, they have people that test this in-house, and this, as we figured out on version 2.1, did not have any gain difference, meaning that you couldn't really drive uh, your preamp hard with the volume fader. And from 0 to 12 dB, there was no boost. And the board is going to come like that uh, from the factory, because what's happening is it was actually intentionally designed that way because there was not a need to overdrive the preamp. And you know what? That's a lot of people don't need to do that. But if you wanted to have that ability, it's a very simple modification. So in order to make this volume fader operate the same way as the gain fader, you just have to remove one small part. And I'll do my, I've already made the modification because that's what I wanted to do to, ma to match the ability of the MXR M108S. And that part is right here. And you really can't see it too well, but this is R59. There is a 4.7 kilo ohm size 805 surface mount resistor right there. And all you really need to do is remove that, or you can take a small jumper wire and see where this trace is located. You can just remove that resistor or bypass it with a simple jumper wire. That's all you need to do. And then the volume fader will operate exactly as the gain fader. So you'll have two gain stages, one pre-EQ and one post-EQ, just like the MXR. And I'm going to put this back together, plug it in, 
and we're going to check to see if the noise has been corrected. I'm going to use that same cheap 9 volt power supply and we're going to see how the results have come through with this version 3.0 board. Okay, we got the pedal put back together. It is on. It is connected to my PV Basic. I have the gain at 4, and what we're going to do is we're going to set the volume at 4 and the EQ flat, and also set to active. You're going to hear a slight ground loop buzz because I'm right next to a power brick here, so I'll try to move this out of the way. But I want you to hear the difference when I engage the pedal. On, off, on again, and off. Again, pay no attention to the buzzing here because I have it coiled up, but that I can easily get rid of by lifting it up this way. So it definitely has solved that white noise hiss problem. Okay, and the final setup we're going to do, I'm going to play some copyright free music because I don't want to get blocked. And we're going to see the difference on how the operation of the gain fader and the volume fader are, which should be exactly equal. And hopefully you guys will be able to hear the increase in volume from the amplifier when I start playing it, playing the music and adjusting those faders. My final thought on the pedal is that this pedal is amazing. It is now a viable option alternative to the MXR with the exact functionality. And by, by the time I get this uploaded to YouTube, uh, the version 3.0, it's going to take some time for K-Line to get this out to market. There's still a lot of 2.1 versions out in the market now, but it's that one is still a viable product. You just might have a little extra noise. This version, by the time they have it in production, they get it out to shipping. And shipping is probably going to be the biggest detractor right now. I'm not sure when you would see the version 3.0 board. We have a lot of global supply chain issues beyond many people's control right now. So I'm going to say probably in another five to six months, you'll be able to see this version 3.0 board. But in the meantime, if there's any questions or comments, please leave them in the description below. I've also added this video into a playlist that you can watch all three and see the progression. And again, I want to give a big shout out to K-Line and their engineering team and the product development specialists that I've been working with. Thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. You guys are a, a, a great company to work with. The customer service to be able to listen to the feedback and to work uh, with the end consumer at this level, I think is quite amazing. You just don't see that very often. And, you know, I'm giving it my stamp of approval. Again, thank you so much again, and thank you for watching. Cheers.